Hey, what's up, guys? Matt here coming to you from Laid Laws Harley Davidson. I'm here with Steve Garcia, our service department manager. So it's good to have him on this topic, especially because we're talking about exhaust today. talking about a lot of frequently asked questions that we get here at the dealership. Obviously in the Harley Davidson world, a lot of people want to do aftermarket exhaust. And I think the exhaust question is something that we get on a daily basis. I know in the service department, you guys get asked exhaust yeah. questions probably every single day. Every day. So first of all, we have a couple different sections of this. We're going to talk about, you know, the different exhaust options and we're going to oversimplify this in a big way. But then we're going to talk about like tuners and compliance things with like the EPA and with CARB, which uh, is for California and no other states. CARB is California Air Resource Board. So we are a California dealer. So we're gonna talk about CARB and the implications of doing exhaust with CARB and kind of navigating those waters. And then we're gonna talk a little bit about the warranty implications as well. And some things that you have to uh, understand when you're changing your exhaust, because there are certain things that you can do and you can't do to really ensure that your warranty stays intact when you're doing the exhaust job. So first off, I wanted to kick it off just to, again, in a very oversimplified way, talk about what the exhaust options are on a Harley Davidson. So usually people do one of two things. You can either just change the mufflers out on your Harley and leave your header pipe the same. And the header pipe is what actually goes to the cylinders and connects down to the foot peg area usually. And then the muffler is the end that has, in most cases has like baffle and things like that in it. And the other option is doing like a full exhaust system. So that's gonna be the entire system, you know, all the way from the top, all the way to the end. And so what I typically tell people is you gotta be realistic about what you're trying to accomplish from an exhaust system. Usually there's three things that people are going for. You're going for the sound, the look or the style, and then performance. And so I think those three things, you have to really narrow it down to exactly what you're looking for. Usually if you want just a little bit more sound and you wanna maybe change the look of your bike a little bit, a lot of times I'll steer people towards just doing mufflers. I personally just have mufflers on my street glide. I still have the stock header pipe. Steve on the other hand has done something completely different, which he's gonna jump into as, as well in just a minute. The other option being a full exhaust system, that is gonna get it a lot louder depending on what exhaust system you go with. And it's gonna change the look and the style more dramatically as well potentially. And in some circumstances, Chances if you are building out the motor in a big way with like cam, maybe heads, more compression, things like that, they could also lend to a little bit more performance if you're doing a, a full yeah. exhaust system. Yeah, it just falls back to, like you said, what do you want to do? I mean, yeah, exhaust systems are cool, two in the one exhaust. Yeah, you're going to be loud. But people don't think the bike's got to run. I mean, people are putting two into one pipes on. Yeah, it sounds cool, but the bike's running super lean. You can see the exhaust system's purple, super purple backfiring like crazy you're hurting the engine yeah it sounds cool but it goes back to your pocket things are expensive do you want to look cool be loud and then have your motor grenade i, I don't think so yeah um, and then slip-ons slip-ons are cool if you're a weekend rider and just want a little more sound slip-ons is perfect my main thing is if you want to build power you want a big motor you you want to go for that aftermarket tuner then i always want to suggest Hardy davison but like me i'm a high performance guy i went all out but i know that when it's grenade time that <laughs> I got to be ready to fork out and yeah. I know what comes with that. And yeah. a lot of guys think a stage one air cleaner and slip on pipes, I'm going to gain so much power and I'm going to get a dyno tune. I always decline that. I never recommend that to anybody because it's just a waste of your money. In terms of performance. Yeah, and performance. Yeah. Yeah. And a lot of guys won't tell you like, oh, they'll sell it to you. Like, oh dude, get a slip on, get an air cleaner and get a dyno tune. You just spent $600 to gain a horsepower. If that, yeah. I mean, that's yeah. a lot of money. So that, that's a good point, Steve. So I think if you're just looking for a little bit more sound, we're talking about maybe 30 or 40% more volume out of your Harley Davidson, and you're changing the end portion of your exhaust system, just the muffler portion. And you also, maybe you don't want to spend $2,000 plus on a full exhaust system with a tuner, then just changing the mufflers is a good option for you. And Steve and I talked about this a little bit beforehand too. A lot of times you can get away with just throwing mufflers on your touring chassis bike mm -hmm. and it being okay. It will run just fine. You'll get the sound out of it, slightly different look, but to Steve's point, you're not going to, you know, set the world on fire with the speed and all that stuff. So now the full exhaust system, like Steve said, 
if you're looking to get you know up to a hundred percent, two hundred percent more sound out of it, get something really loud, and you're building some big you know performance over the top bike, and you don't really care so much about your warranty, then now you can maybe look at a full exhaust system. And there's a couple different caveats to that, and we're going to kind of go into tuners a little bit more in just a second. Is that pretty fair to say? Yeah, and I mean, I had a Thunderheader on my Street Glide, and yeah, I was romping. It was cool, but after a while, you know. Being that that's your long haul bike, it gets kind of annoying sometimes, you know. Yeah. So and slip ons are always nice. I went back to slip ons, TBR slip ons. Uh, thanks to TBR for that, and it's perfect. It ran great. Yeah, I think that's a good point. A lot of times people are like, "Okay, the louder the better," but really, like Steve said, if you're going like a long road trip or something like that, after four or five or six hundred miles in a <laughs> yeah. day of a loud exhaust, like constantly droning in your ears, it gets really annoying. So. If you're just kind of like a, a, a rip around town and, and, hey, look at me type of a bike, then sure, make it really loud uh, if, that's, if that's what you're going for. But you should probably think twice if you're putting it on your long range touring machine, I would think. Okay, so moving on to tuners real quick, because this is where things get a little bit sticky and technical. So like I mentioned earlier, if you're just doing mufflers, usually you don't even have to tune your bike. If you want to do it right and do a stage one, it requires the Screaming Eagle Pro Street Tuner a set of mufflers, and an air cleaner. Correct. So if you want to do it right, you want to get a slight little increase in performance, maybe one or two horsepower, something like that. Yeah. And if you are changing your air cleaner, maybe it's for aesthetics. Again, you're not going to be doing it for performance, really. Then you're going to want to tune it. A lot of times people say, like, okay, well, can I do an air cleaner and mufflers and not tune it? We don't recommend that here at our yeah. shop. Once you change the air cleaner, we recommend getting the Screaming Eagle Pro Street Tuner. Yeah. yeah, you're only getting one to two horsepower, but that's not the reason for the tuner. The tune is to actually reevaluate and recalibrate air fuel mixture fuel. Um, and a lot of people don't think that, well, if I'm only going to gain one, two horsepower, why even get a tuner? It's to help recalibrate your ECM, which is to make your bike run cooler, get more air. So it helps with diesel pop. So it's not necessarily a bad thing, you know, to get it because it does yeah. help the motor. It's making your motor safer. Yeah, and that's what I have in my bike right yeah. now. I have a Stage 1 with the Screaming Eagle Pro Street Tuner. Mm -hmm. And a part of the reason I picked the Screaming Eagle Tuner as well is because of you know protecting my warranty, which we're going to get into here real mm -hmm. quick as well. The second thing is, is if you go to a full exhaust system, a lot of these full exhaust systems just don't run right without a tune on them. You can't just bolt up a full exhaust system in most cases and have it run right. We have found a couple uh, systems that, we are able to bolt up and run okay, like the s, &S, s pipe. For the, the touring bikes, they have a sidewinder, I believe is what it's called. And for yeah. the soft tails, which we've used a lot of, it's called the Super Street, if yeah. I'm not mistaken. Pretty good pipe. And those are California compliant as well, which we're going to jump into that a little bit more in depth here in just a second. But here's kind of where the rub comes, and here's where you have to really make a decision. Right now, if you use an aftermarket tuner and you install that on your bike, you are in some ways compromising and jeopardizing your warranty. And so we always recommend using the Screaming Eagle tuner and get it installed by a dealership and on your, your warranty registration form. That way, if there is some type of a, a warranty claim on your bike, they're gonna, the motor company is going to recognize that that does have a Screaming Eagle tuner on there. And that won't be an issue in trying to get your claim fulfilled. However, if you have an aftermarket tuner, which is very common, if you go to like an independent shop or something like that, they may put an aftermarket tuner on your bike to tune your exhaust system. When you bring it into a dealership and they hook it up to what's called the digital tech, which is basically the computer system that diagnoses your bikes and does a lot of other things, it will immediately flag your VIN. It will recognize that it's a, not a factory tune. It yeah. will flag your VIN and then what happens is if you make a powertrain warranty in the future, it will go under manual review. And I want to make this very clear. A lot of people say, okay, if you get an aftermarket tuner on your bike, you're going to void your warranty. First of all, the only way it would negatively impact your bike is the powertrain aspect of your bike, which is the most important part of your yeah. bike. I think most people would argue, but it then goes under manual review, which then makes it so the motor company is like, okay, we got a, a warranty claim on this bike. It has a flag on the VIN. Let's check out what's going on with this before we just blindly accept yeah. the warranty claim. So like, good point, Matt, just because it's flagged doesn't mean that you're, you know, SOL. They're just going to further review it. So what we do is the technician will diagnose the part, the failure, and then Harley will determine if the tuner was the issue leading to the failed part and a lot of the times 
tuner doesn't really necessarily cause the issue. It's the internals. So most guys, you put an aftermarket tuner, you're obviously putting the tuner because you need it to back the cam up or mm -hmm. the big board kit that you installed. Mm -hmm. So, Heads. you know, so if that is what causes the problem, then hardly... They're going to deny your claim. They're going to deny your claim because you buy a aftermarket part. It's not Harley's product, so they can't back it. Yeah. You know, don't be fooled by it's done. You're done. Don't come in. I mean, we want you in here. We all ride. It's just, it's not clear. And I'm glad Matt's doing this because we're trying to clarify it. Yeah. So many times we as a dealer, we have to give a customer the bad news that their warranty yeah. claim has been denied. Yeah. And it's not even our decision. Yeah. You know, if Harley Davidson <clears throat> warranty denies your claim based on having aftermarket parts. They have every right to do yeah. that. But at the end of the day, it's not really our decision. Yeah. But I think I want to stress the point too, that just because your VIN is flagged, let's say you use an aftermarket tuner, that doesn't necessarily void all your claims, even on your powertrain. It yeah. goes under manual review yeah. and there is a chance that maybe they will pay out your claim on your, yeah. your powertrain, even if you have a flagged VIN. Yeah. So it, it, it in no way just blanket voids your entire bike of, of warranty issues. Yeah. Let's jump real quick into CARB and, and what tuners are available in California right now. And uh, Steve did a little bit of, of prep work on yeah. you know what, what's available in California because in California, like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, we have a whole nother layer of rules and regulations, I guess you can call yeah. it, which is CARB, California Air Resource Board. So... Harley Davidson every year has to get all their Screaming Eagle Performance products approved for California use. And right now, for 23 model year motorcycles and 24 model year motorcycles, we can't use Screaming Eagle tuners. Not yet. Yeah, not yet. So, you know, we're hoping those get approved as quickly as possible. Yeah. But that being said, it's kind of a dance right now. If someone comes in and buys a brand new bike from us, a 23 or a 24, and they want to do like a stage one, uh, let's say they just want to do the air cleaner, the muffler, and then the, the Screaming Eagle tuner. We can't offer that to people in California right now. Uh, and so it's kind of like, okay, well, if you want that stuff and you want to do performance work, you're either going to an aftermarket tuner, which is going to compromise your warranty, or you're kind of just waiting, or you're doing just a pair of slip-ons where you can put them on your bike and not tune your bike, just keep your, your Harley Davidson tune which if you do that, by the way, you're very safe in protecting your warranty. Do you have that conversation with customers a lot, which is talking about tuners? And yeah, it, it goes back to what we said earlier. Do you want noise or do you want runnability? Do you want a warranty or do you just want to go all out? You know? Yeah, and take the risk. Take of the risk of, hey, yeah, I'm hauling butt, but when it breaks, you know, it's, it's out of pocket. <laughs> you're <laughs> you paying know? for it. Yeah. yeah. And we all know that. I mean, you've guys seen all of our bikes on the channel. It's kind of like... We roll with the punches. <laughs> yeah. You know? Yeah. So like I mentioned yeah. earlier, I kind of on my street glide currently took the safe route. I have a 2018 model year, which back then Screaming Eagle products were available. And so I use the Screaming Eagle product. I have mufflers and an air cleaner and my warranty is totally intact. If I were ever to have a warranty, a powertrain warranty claim, there would be nothing to inhibit my bike from making that claim fulfilled. However, Steve went the other direction. You know, Steve... You have a, a aftermarket tuner on your bike. Yeah. You know, he went full exhaust system. He did some motor work. You did some motor work on your bike as well, yeah. right? She's got a little little kick. A little pep to her. Yeah. Yeah. So he went, he did motor mods and all that stuff, but he's also a service manager and he has resources that the average person doesn't have. You know, he, he's capable of fixing his stuff out of his pocket if something, you know, goes wrong and he, he accepts that. So, hope not. I, yeah, we'll cross, I hope our, I didn't myself. <laughs> we'll cross our fingers, right? <laughs> And so, you know, you just have to kind of make that decision yeah. in California. Now, if you live outside of California, all the Screaming Eagle tuners and products are 100% available to yeah. you. And so if your priority, like Steve said, if your priority is warranty, then use Screaming Eagle tuners. And, you know, you can use other pipes and things like that. Keep the internal Screaming Eagle, though. Like if you're doing like a, a cam or a bigger pistons and cylinders, yeah. use Screaming Eagle. As long as you use Screaming Eagle products, your warranty will be intact. However... After the first two years, you can purchase an extended service plan. So you, if you purchase the extended service plan, you can purchase up to an additional five years on top of the two years that comes with the motorcycle for a total of seven years of warranty coverage. You have to make sure though you tell the dealership that you want the Screaming Eagle coverage yeah. box checked on your, on your contract. Your warranty will cover all Screaming Eagle products only if you get the additional 
Screaming Eagle coverage. Usually it's an extra $250, $300 on top of the price of your extended service plan. And make sure too that when you go to a dealer and you buy an extended service plan, make sure you tell them, I want the Harley Davidson extended service plan with the Screaming Eagle coverage. But for our California customers, unfortunately, we're kind of waiting. What are some products? So one of our service advisors has a 22 Street Bob and he wanted to keep his warranty and he wanted to do a cam. So Harley offers stage two torque cam and power cam with a Screaming Eagle tuner. So on a 22 on model a 22 year. model. Yeah. So we did it. You know, we did it. It's running good and it it moves and he's covered. So if we ever need to file a claim, which we did, they paid for a Screaming Eagle torque cam, $50 mm. deposit. And it was actually the extended warranty that covered it because he had the Screaming Eagle coverage. So he bought, he had a stage two kit and yeah. he had a, a mechanical failure of yeah. some type. Mm hmm. The yeah. lifter was going out, um, Screaming Eagle lifter. So we filed, the, diagnosed it, determined that it was the oil lifter failing, scored a little bit of the uh, cam, made a parts list, called it in, and got it covered. Perfect. His deductible was 50 bucks. And so he had the Screaming Eagle Screaming coverage Eagle on coverage. his warranty. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to go over this a little bit. I was going over this with Matt today. So Harley, for 21 and 22 models, there's two tuners available for a stage one. So if you buy an air cleaner, it doesn't necessarily have to be a Harley one, but we do offer a download for it. So there's two tuners. One's a Bluetooth tuner. It's kind of like a FP3 style. It's Bluetooth hooked up to your phone. You download the app. You can do it at home. We do it here. If you're familiar with the program, it's a little easier. If not, then we would recommend coming into a dealership. You have more airflow, more fuel, and it's tuned. So for 21 and 22 models, it just came out on the 15th of December. So there's two. The Bluetooth one, we do not have in stock, but it is available, so it's not back ordered. So that's good. <laughs> it is a twenty day lead time from the f uh, dealership. So whatever dealership you order it from, it takes twenty one days to get it. So and, and these are considered they're like the same as a Pro Street tuner, except yeah. you can see it on your phone. Um, yeah, one's the Bluetooth that's all on your phone, mm -hmm. so it's on the fly. You can check diagnostics if you have a check engine code. You can, it pop up. It pops up on there, and then there's the standard street tuner, which is a little black little box. The Pro Street the Tuner. The Pro Street Tuner. Mm -hmm. And then that one, you obviously have to hook it up to the computer and the whole shebang. So, yeah, it's a little cheaper. The other one's a little easier, but it's obviously a little more money. Gotcha. So those two are available for Milwaukee 8s and Sportster XLs, Stage 1s for 21 and 22s. So that's some good news. I know we've been waiting almost two years, but yeah. we're, we're, we're getting progress, you know. Yeah. It's us being in California, it's just so – we're just so limited. Like, it's unfair. We're all – horsepower guys here in california this is where it started and we're kind of punished <laughs> right like, there's nothing we can do dude like there's nothing we can do but if you're out of california all, yeah. the, all these screaming eagle products are, are available, available on yeah. 23 and 24 yeah. model year 20, motorcycles yeah i'm gonna just start at 20 2020 to 23s are all available another big thing too people think if you buy a bike from out of state and you bring it to california and you want to do a 131 or a 124 we still cannot install the software onto your non-california bike it will not let us the computer will flag it we can't even pull up the software i get that a lot well i'm gonna buy my bike in arizona or vegas and bring it here and you do a 131 kit harley is super smart they will not let us do that like there's no way for us to even see the program so i've had a couple customers do that where they don't ask the questions they go and buy a bike elsewhere bring it here and there's things that i can't even do i can't even you know like a key fob because it's not from california that's how strict oh so even if you're not doing performance work yeah it's an out-of-state bike yeah sometimes they won't even let us get into the electronics into back like, yeah. end wow it's, it's there they're, it's getting like stricter yeah. by the day yeah you know that's interesting um and there's other reasons why if you live in california you don't really want to buy your bike elsewhere because you can't even register your bike in california yeah. until it has 6500 miles on it so i think the takeaway here is before you jump out to another state and buy your bike do your homework and, and figure out if it's really worth it. I know I think sometimes people think that they're going to save money and, and with, yeah. in taxes or maybe they have like a buddy's house in Arizona and they're going to save on the tax or something like that. Yeah. But um, in the long run, there's there's headaches that are unforeseen, yeah. I think, for a lot of people. Even trying to register it, California models have what we call an EVAP canister and out-of-state ones do not have it. Let's just say you fall behind and your registration gets suspended for some reason and you need to get it VIN verification again. They're going to look for that. And you're, yeah. you know, you just have a bike that you cannot register in California. So Yeah, without the 
without the canister. Yeah, they have the canister. They have their little admission sticker on the side of the frame. Yeah. So just I always ask, like tell people to ask, call us. Like we're always here. <laughs> you know. Yeah. Before you go and do that. So there's a couple companies out there that are making currently working on two in one exhaust that will be compliant in California. A lot of companies actually, but they're gonna have a baffle like this. Yeah, it's gonna trap some fuel, but I would rather have a cool two in one with a baffle than a stock exhaust. That's just me. Totally. So what it does is it just if you can see this little carbon canister in here and it's pretty hard to see. This is what traps all that unburned fuel. People <laughs> take the head the muffler out and the cat out and cut it like this. The baffle out. The baffle, yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah. The baffle out and cut it. And yeah, you get sound, like Matt said. But you need to tune the bike if you're gonna do that, you know? And unnecessarily a straight pipe is always good. Just keep in mind, you can do this. Yeah, I've seen it on the internet. Just cut it out. You're good. You know, but if you're gonna do this, which I'm not gonna say I recommend it, but if you do it, just get it tuned so that it it doesn't grenade on you. That's a great point, actually. It's something that we should probably emphasize more. You know, a lot of times these guys that want to save a dollar, you know, more power to if you want to save money, but, you know, you really got to know what you're doing. If you're running even a full exhaust system, some of these full exhaust systems out there, if they're not properly tuned, like Steve said, you're you're damaging your engine. It's not going to run right, and you're damaging your engine, and then your engine blows up and then you bring it in. Guess what? You have a pipe that wasn't tuned correctly and, you know, your warranty claim could be denied. So, you know, make sure you know what you're doing, uh, especially once you start cutting equipment out of your motorcycle. Or if you start putting just bolting up just XYZ full exhaust system to your bike without tuning it in any way, it's probably not going to run right unless it's a couple of these pipes out there that just have a lot of R&D behind them that, that do run okay on a stock tune. I think uh, maybe let's just wrap up with some takeaways here, Steve, and yeah. I'll kind of explain my takeaways, and then I'd love to hear your takeaways as well, Steve. I think the takeaways for me when I talk to people are, are you just going after a little bit more sound on your motorcycle and you don't want to break the bank? If that's the case, a lot of times just throwing a pair of mufflers on your motorcycle is the way to go. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you're out of state and it's a brand new bike and you have access to the Screaming Eagle tuner, by all means, get the stage one. You can do it right, get the air cleaner, make it look a little bit cooler and more custom. If you're in California and you just want a little bit more sound, and you want to just kind of wait for the Screaming Eagle tuners, throw a pair of mufflers on there, enjoy the bike. If you're someone that is willing to take the risk of a mechanical failure happening and having to pay for that mechanical failure out of pocket, then by all means, get a full exhaust system, make, make it super loud and use an aftermarket tuner and get your VIN flagged and, you know, roll the dice on, you know, potentially powertrain warranty getting denied. If you want to go down that path or power to you, just know that you are taking a risk with your warranty if you go down that path. Mm-hmm. And if, you, if you're looking for just performance, guess what, guys? You're going to need a lot more than just a pipe to get more performance yeah. out of these bikes. Harley-Davidson, the stock pipes, they're pretty optimized. Like the header pipe on a, on a Harley Davidson, the R and D behind it is way more than any aftermarket pipe out there. I'm confident in saying that. So by taking that equipment off and putting a foreign exhaust on without a professional tuner, you're probably not going to get more performance out of it. And if you start doing stuff like this and taking this out, now you're losing things like bottom end torque, Mm -hmm. back pressure. You're losing back pressure, so you're you're you're, you're going to lose bottom end power in a lot of circumstances, and so that that's my two cents. Yeah, just falling back, like Matt said, if you want a two into one style, you want that look. I always recommend the SNS. It's carb compliant, looks cool. They offer it in black and in stainless, and it has a nice sound to it. And like I said, get a torque kit, go a torque cam kit from Screaming Eagle. It's great. My service advisor has that, and he has a SPC pipe on it. It sounds great. It runs good. And internally, like I said, he had a failure, and it was covered. Yeah. But, you know, that's my two cents. And it just goes back to, you know, you want to have a hot rod build, and, and it comes with a consequence. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think, too, I'll add as well, prior to a lot of these stricter regulations in California, we did a lot of these stage three and stage four kits on bikes. Yeah. Um, we did them all the time, and they were great. And they were all 100% covered under warranty because we always recommended to customers that got them to get the Screaming Eagle coverage. So if you're out of state you and you really want your bike to be you know, hopped up and get significantly more power. I mean, you have like a 131 kit from Screaming Eagle nowadays. 135s. 135s out there. Great motor. Yeah. So you can get a ton of power still and still be within the bounds of Harley Davidson Screaming Eagle products 
and still have all your, your warranty benefits there for you. So that's kind of my recommendation is if you want to play it safe and still do a lot of motor work and everything, and you're outside of the state of California, you know, get that 131, 135. And can I move? I was gonna, <laughs> we don't want to do that. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's funny you bring that up. I've had people say like, well, can I buy a bike from you, Matt, and then go out of state and, and get it installed as well? No, and no, you know, not so fast because as soon as you go to another dealership out of state, your your VIN is going to be a California yeah. VIN, and dealers are not going to be able to install those California illegal products yeah. on your Harley Davidson because you know they can recognize that it's a California VIN, and you can't do it. So yeah, for us California people, it's kind of just a little bit of a waiting game. Yeah, um, do what you can. Either you know suffer the implications of of compromising your warranty, or just kind of wait until the Screaming Eagle tuners are approved in California before you do major motor work. Yeah, I hope this answers a lot of you guys' questions. Did we miss anything, Steve? I don't think so. And, like, if we did, just drop it in the comments. Matt and I are usually on there trying to write back or hit us up on IG. Yeah, yeah, this is a topic that we get a ton of questions on. So hopefully we were able to help you guys out. And, um, as always, if you're looking for a bike in Southern California, make sure you hit us up here at Laid Loss Harley-Davidson. If you need uh, any type of work on your bike service maintenance things like that on your bike hit up steve or his team at the service department we got a really good text in the back guys we have i I think we easily have the best team in southern california as far as technicians are involved like our guys are we got some 15 year 20 year vets back there that have been doing it for a long time so and steve himself has been in the game for a really long time as well so yeah thanks all for watching guys and uh, we'll see you on the next one later